Now, just before we get into this one, today's video is brought to you by my own personal sponsor, Advanced GG. Advanced is the only clinically proven gaming supplement actually shown to help with performance. Like most other gaming drinks, it does have caffeine in it, but Advanced actually uses green tea caffeine, which is supposed to be a bit healthier, and it's going to give you 46 hours of energy. Unlike most other gaming supplements, it also has a vitamin complex for your daily dose of vitamins B and C, and the entire drink is sugar-free. What made me interested was the use of nootropics, which are more or less brain-enhancing supplements or drugs. New Level is the nootropic that Advanced uses in the Focus drink, which is what I have. It's proven to help boost reaction times, muscle memory, and help with decision making. All their products are open label, so you can check exactly what's in them, and that's what I did personally, as I would never take something that I don't understand. I actually ended up trying it after a mate of mine was sponsored. I bought some to support him, ended up really liking it, and then hit them up for a sponsorship of my own. Now, if you'd like to try it out yourself, head down to the link in the description and use code SILK for 10% off your order. Now, let's get into the video. So, after all the comments asking for some jet videos from me, and rightfully so, I decided to finally come out and use the F-35 in a match of Battlefield 2042. Now, there has been a reason why I've been avoiding this for the most part, and... I mean, it just makes me sad. Jets are in such a bad state in this game, and so much about what they used to be in previous Battlefield titles is just totally gone. I mean, I feel like whoever designed the jets has never really flown a jet before, and it feels almost like every single type of vehicle was designed by an entirely different studio. I mean, helis feel totally different to tanks. I mean, tanks feel realistic, slow, uh, whatever. And then helis feel super arcadey, fast, twitchy, and it's just really easy to use. And then jets are kind of like in the middle a bit, like they just they just feel bad. Jets are by the far the worst out of all the vehicles and every time I use them it just kind of makes me really annoyed because I have so many hours in those previous Battlefield games where jets were just great. I mean they were great fun, they were really really good to fly. Of course in Battlefield 4 towards the end of the lifespan you had people getting really really good at the jets and they became pretty dominant but it never used to be like that and that's just kind of the side effect of having a game that lasts so long. Eventually people are going to get close to those skill ceilings and eventually perfect some of those mechanics, but I would much prefer jets from Battlefield 4 than what we have in this game. So in this game we're going to talk a bit about the jets. I'll try to get a bit of a kill streak going here. And what's wrong with them? So what you're seeing right here is a start. The, the weapons just feel soulless. There's no skill to it at all. Instead of using my cannons and improving my aim and getting better each time I play the game, I'm not really doing that. I'm just using the missiles. The, the your input, aka the rudders, aka the AD input, whatever you want to call it, basically the horizontal movement of the jet is extremely unresponsive to the point where it is extremely hard to aim. You can't really reliably aim with the rudders in this game. It's the same with the scout heli. The rudders are really, really kind of twitchy and not very linear in the way that they actually act. It's really bad and it makes it hard to actually have a lot of aiming skill in the game. And what ends up happening in both the scout heli and the jets is you resort to the lower skill weapons. So in the jet you use the heat seekers, in the scout heli you use the rocket pods. Now this is fine for new players. I understand that these kind of weapons have to be in the game for new players so they can at least kind of get started and have a bit of fun. But there must be some sort of way to express your skill a little bit more. Like there must be a further step you can take if you want to put the time in. You've got to have some way of rewarding those players, and in this game there just really is none of that for jets. And I'm realizing this commentary is going to end up as a bit of a rant as long as I fly jets for, but... It's just how it is now, and I mean, look how hard it is to aim the cannon. Like, the jet just feels so sluggish, and flying it honestly is the worst part. The, the physics and the way that the jet handles just feel so, so bad, and it just... It's a pain to fly. I mean, the Osprey is literally more maneuverable than the jets in this game, and that's a problem. So the only way to actually get kills on helicopters with the cannons, from my experience, it's what I'm doing right now, you just chuck it in VTOL. I mean, this isn't what Jets are all about, to be honest. The VTOL honestly just felt like a cheesy feature to me when I first saw it, but actually playing the game, it's absolutely essential, because that's the only way you're going to get kills on infantry. That's the only way you're going to get kills on helicopters. And you can use it in dogfights to reverse people instantly. Anyways, we're getting locked on here. Looks like we're fine fly away oh okay so I just got hit by a missile that I can't even hear that's great all right so giving up on jets we're gonna head into the helis now and talk a bit about the helis I guess so equally skillless I would say the helis are except they're overpowered they're extremely strong and they're gonna reward you a lot for having a very low amount of skill 
Um, pretty much the only skillful thing about the helis in this game is the 1v1s. Uh, they still kind of reward the better player to the point where if you're better in the 1v1, you will usually win. Um, but killing infantry, that whole skill ceiling that we used to have in Battlefield 4 with the miniguns, having really sharp, nice aim, that's totally out the window now in this game. You pretty much just use the rocket pods. You, you can use the miniguns, and I would recommend using them while you're out of ammo on the rockets. But as long as you have rocket pods, you should be using those because they're just much more effective at killing infantry. Now, to talk about a total rebalance of helicopters, I've already said this in my review video, but I'm predicting that some of you guys haven't seen that video. I would recommend it because it has a, it has a really, really good reception. In a video full of opinions, as my review was, it received about 90% likes with like almost 5k likes now. So really appreciate all you guys blowing that one up. Uh, it means a lot just having some good reception on a video that's so critical of the game. I was kind of hesitant about putting it out because I wanna, don't want to go too hard on the game. I don't want to sabotage my now connections with EA, but I mean, that review was just, that was just me speaking my mind and I, I really appreciate the feedback on that video. Anyways, back to the helis. As I said in my review, there needs to be a power shift. Currently, the power is all in the rockets. That's where all of the scat helis power comes from. And that happens to be the easiest way to play the vehicle. The miniguns need a buff and the rockets need a nerf. That's basically the gist of it. And I'd really, really like to see that. It's going to make the vehicle a lot more fun to use. You can use the miniguns as is, but they are not centered with the crosshair. So where you aim is not where you shoot. And they have a lot of convergence. They're very hard to aim. They have a large spool up time. Just a bunch of things about it just feels really, really clunky. And for the average player, they're not going to pick up on the fact that the miniguns are misaligned. They're just going to say, wow, these miniguns feel bad. They're not going to actually notice that they are misaligned. Or they're not going to pick up on the convergence. They're just going to say, well, these are really inaccurate, aren't they? But they are actually accurate as long as you know the convergence. So these kind of things make these weapons so unintuitive that the new players will never use them. And the result is you just getting pounded by rockets as infantry. Anyway, in this gameplay... I will try to talk about what I'm doing a little bit because a lot of you guys have actually asked me as well how to uh, kind of fly the helis and make them effective in this game. I thought it was quite self-explanatory, but we will go over it a little bit. So firstly, a lot of people ask me about my controls. They are default. I use default controls for flying helicopters in Battlefield and I make a few changes to the jets, but especially for the helis, just run default controls. There is a setting that people call rifle aim, which a lot of people use in Battlefield 4, which is where you... You bind your rudders to the mouse and then you do the roll on the A and D keys. Basically reverse those two functions. It is a really, really cool control scheme and it's extremely effective in Battlefield 4. Thing is, in this game, it actually doesn't work. Uh, rifle aim does not work. And I found that changing any of my bindings in this game often just made the game bug out. Like I had an issue where I tried to change my jet bindings so I could free look behind me and it just totally bugged out my controls and my jet would lock up every time I spawned it, my heli would lock up and I couldn't use air vehicles. And the way I fixed this bug was literally on stream, I held my keyboard up to the camera, tried to change bindings, just started spazzing out and clicking all the buttons at once and it just randomly fixed it. So, I mean, I guess get wrecked battlefield, I'm able to fly helis again now, but that whole system of rebinding, that just needs work. I feel like they just didn't change it at all and didn't fix it. Again, I don't understand how this wasn't something that wasn't spotted in playtesting. If they invited any good vehicle player, the first thing that we do when we get into the game, we go into the settings, make sure that's all set up. That's what any good player does, to be honest. They go into the settings and they, they fine tune everything and get it about right before they start playing. But clearly the controls and key bindings weren't tested or at least weren't cared about enough to fix. So that's the result we had. You can't even change your heli bindings. Anyways, back to the heli. Use default bindings, they're just fine in this game. You don't need to aim very precisely. Rocket pods do all the work for you. No need for rifle aim. Now, as for some actual tactics for the heli. On this map, you pretty much get to play around two areas. You get to play around the B flag and the E flag. The reason for this is that the flares in this game last a very, very, very short amount of time. You get almost no time with the flares, so you can't be caught out in the open. If you're caught out even slightly in the open, you are going to be killed. There's just no doubt about it. 64 players, at least a few of them are going to be running stingers at all times. If you're not next to a piece of cover as soon as you flare, because they last so little time, you'll be killed for doing that. So just play around those two flags. Cover is extremely important. Now, the other thing is air vehicles. Now, this game does have a similar kind of uh, counter system where... You have a target priority list, just like you did in BF4. The difference is 
in this game you can't actually kill all your counters because the biggest counter to you is the jet and most of the time they are lagging out a lot so i found the best way to counter the jets was just to not shoot them at all and hopefully they don't see you and get annoyed at you if a jet pilot gets pissed off at you he's basically going to make it extremely hard and this kind of goes back to the other discussion i wanted to bring up in this video which is the whole idea of are helicopters overpowered obviously i have said they're overpowered in my descriptions titles thumbnails whatever and they are. The helicopters are extremely overpowered. But what most people don't realize is that the counters to helicopters were extremely strong. And in certain situations where the enemy team didn't want me to fly, they could literally make it impossible for me to do anything. And that's absolutely insane. Now, there was many ways of doing this, but one of the most uh, entertaining ways that I saw that they did it was they put an AA tank on top of the B flag. And that basically gets rid of my B cover, so I can't play around that flag. And then it can actually shoot to E, which is the other spot that I like to play. And that just made it impossible to fly. I had to go over to C, and there was very little cover around there. And I just ended up not helling. I just got an infantry. I have more fun playing infantry in this game, so that's what ended up happening. But yeah, the AA tank, you can drop it on top of high ground. You can parachute it on top of any single tower in the game. I don't know if DICE thought of that either, but... Those kind of positionings. Imagine if there was a mobile anti-air on top of Siege of Shanghai Tower in BF4. There'd be outrage. There would definitely be outrage. But because they've unlocked the sandbox in this game, no one complains. Anyways, the other counter, which I saw nobody use. I didn't see anybody use this against me for pretty much the whole beta. Even going on 100 plus kill streaks, Was the EMP drone. This is the most overpowered thing in the game without a doubt. You can EMP a helicopter, and while it's EMP, it cannot flare, it cannot shoot, it cannot do anything. And during that golden window of opportunity, you should lock onto it with a missile, and it dies. That's it. That's all you have to do. Perhaps use a helicopter or a jet for a more guaranteed kind of chase down, so you can make sure the missile hits. EMP drone, missile, the heli's dead. Now, do I think that that kind of hard rock, paper, scissors balancing should be in the game? No, the EMP drone... In a lot of good players' opinions, even some infantry players have said it's actually overpowered, but a lot of vehicle players especially have said that the EMP is very overpowered in this game. It definitely shuts down tanks as well. And, I mean, this is just such a rant video at this point. I don't know if anyone's going to watch this, but I remember seeing on Twitter, I'll put it up on screen right now, DICE posted a graphic about the character usage in the game. And basically what we found was that Webster McKay was the most played character. He had a lot of grapple hook usage. And DICE are basically saying that they like to use data to make balancing choices. And, I mean, it, it can be a good assistant to, to decision making, but it never should be the pure thing that everyone does. Because, for example, Maria Falk's uh, syringe pistol, whatever, stim pistol, that was the lowest used weapon. So, more or less the conclusion that you can make from this is that Webster is multitudes better than Maria Falk, when in actuality, Maria is one of the strongest uh, specialists in the game because she can get rid of attrition, she can heal and give herself ammo. That is really, really strong. And I actually played her for the first few days and found it to be extremely effective. And I'm kind of scared that DICE is going to make balancing decisions based off data. So for example, in their data, it probably shows that the Casper EMP drone is a very low usage rate item. Not many people use that. I barely ever saw them. But what that actually tells DICE is that it's an underpowered gadget and it needs a buff. When in actuality, it's one of the strongest gadgets in the game and it might even need a nerf. This kind of stuff, it happens all the time. And I remember in Battlefield 5 TTK uh, patches, if you guys played Battlefield 5, you'll know about this, but I will explain it for those who didn't. More or less, the time to kill in Battlefield 5 was changed due to mathematical data and just analysis. More or less, they were able to tell that Apparently some weapons were being too effective out of their intended engagement ranges according to the data. And what they did was they totally ruined the game by introducing a TTK patch that nobody asked for. Now what was worse about this was they released this patch after a update that everyone loved. So more or less, they really really improved the game. They made it really good, gained back a lot of players, gained back a lot of trust. And then they went against the entire community's desires by introducing a TTK patch that nobody asked for. They later reverted this patch, and then they did it again. They did the same exact thing after messing it up once. Now, that to me is extremely disappointing. <laughs> like being rocketed there. And I hope that they don't just make balancing decisions based off math and data and that kind of stuff. As great as it is, you need to play test. And I mean, Dice, if you're watching this, I really, really love Battlefield. It's my favorite game of all time. 
I have so much fun playing it, and despite the kind of videos that I've been making lately, I really do love this game. It has a lot of fun things about it, and it's kind of that concept where you can love something that's really, really broken, like a car or whatever. It can be kind of not great or not perfect, but you can see the potential. I can definitely see the potential with this game, but it does need a lot of changes, and I really, really wish that... Not necessarily me. I mean, it doesn't have to be me. I'm not going to, you know, be that egocentric, but somebody who's really really good at the game again probably not me right but there should be someone who's actually good at the game in these play tests because in this content creator uh beta pre-beta event i already dropped a 50 kill streak on my very first game playing and then i mean back to back to back games we were just destroying because when it comes down to it this game was balanced at a, a top 50 percent level rather than a top one percent level which is what is actually done in games that end up lasting for a long time and having a high skill ceiling. So please, DICE, uh, not necessarily me, you know, get Prolosco or any of these uh, 8v8 players for vehicles, get some 5v5 players in there for infantry and actually get them to push the game to its limits and see what can be done, what's broken, what's not broken, because it's going to benefit the game a lot more than data will. Anyways, continuing my rant episode, I've never made one of these videos before, but it's actually quite fun to do. I always enjoy it when AKA Art makes these. Those are some of my favorite videos from his channel. I thought I'd, you know, have my own take at it. Anyways, next up on the conversation block of this unscripted rant video that I'm really enjoying is Hazard Zone. So it's been announced. We basically know what it is. It's going to be a Tarkov Battle Royale kind of game. That's how I see it. So more or less, it's an extraction game mode where you're going in with the objective of picking up some items. You've got to extract out with your squad, but it has some Battle Royale elements like queuing with a squad. You can only enter as a squad, that's very BR. And you can also actually revive players, you get dropped in, that kind of stuff. It's it's talk of BR, that's how I see it. It's a great idea in my opinion, I think it's going to be good fun, but they did miss something, and in my opinion, that's making it free to play. I was expecting that Battlefield 2042 would have at least one free to play element, maybe there's still stuff that we're yet to see, but I thought that this was going to be the free to play element here. It'd be either this or Portal. And Portal doesn't really make much sense because it actually has vanilla included in it. So you can make vanilla experiences in Portal. Uh, so you can't really give that away for free. It was going to have to be Hazard Zone for me. That was what I was predicting. And unfortunately, they haven't done it. Now, let's talk about some pros and cons here. So on the pro side, it's going to get a lot of people interested in the game and a lot of fresh eyes on Battlefield. I mean, there's just a lot of players that will only really play free-to-play games, whether it's because you're too young to have a job, so it's all you can afford. Whatever, you know, they're, they're really, really popular and almost every single super successful FPS game these days at least has a free-to-play component, so I thought they were going to do that. Now, on the negative side, we do have an issue in Battlefield games historically with cheaters, uh, especially Battlefield 5. There was a huge cheating issue where you could basically not even play the game in the Asian region, and pretty much every region had a lot of cheaters playing the game. And obviously, free-to-play games are historically worse for cheating. There's, there's always going to be more cheaters with free-to-play games but in my opinion, it would just be a risk they'd have to take. They'd have to improve the anti-cheat wherever they can, even adding things like hardware bans and stuff like mobile verification. Every little bit helps to counter the cheaters. Anyways, the final topic on my conversation block of absolute unscriptedness is the whole idea of the butterfly effect and the kind of nuances of game balancing. And I've put this in a really confusing, but also just fun and interesting way because I actually like this way of looking at it, but the whole idea of the butterfly effect is it's the idea that small things can have a non-linear and almost unpredictable impact in a complex system. And the way I see this is that Battlefield is a very complex system. I mean, it, as far as first-person shooters go, it has a lot of variables. Not only do you have infantry combat, really, really big maps, all these weather effects, all these different kind of things, but you also have vehicles as well and everything that they bring. They interact with the game in a very, very major way. And even slight changes can have a huge impact on the game. And my issue with what a lot of these people, a lot of even content creators, they're asking for 100 different changes at once. And I'm one of those creators. I'm asking for a lot of changes. And I've got to take a step back and kind of understand how difficult game balancing must be. Because if you just change one slight thing, it can affect so much about what Battlefield is. So for example, I'm asking for a jet buff. So I think jets are really weak right now. They're almost useless. I want them to be buffed. But let's look at what actually happens if you do that. So you buff jets. That is going to increase their effectiveness against their counters. So helis become a lot weaker. They become a lot less strong. 
Now, what do helis affect? Helis affect infantry a lot. They also affect tanks. So does that mean that tanks have a lot more free reign? So tanks can... I mean, at, at this state of the game, they have a very high shell velocity. Very good zoom. They're very effective from range. And does that just create a whole new issue of tanks just sitting on hills sniping like they did back in Battlefield 5? I mean, there's so many more effects and I'm just thinking of something off the top of my head, but... This whole idea of game balancing is really, really complex, and you can't just go and send dice uh, a 50-page list of changes you want to see to the game, because each one of those changes probably has a big effect. So I would like to see, in, in terms of balancing, then make small changes, small adjustments, see what it actually does, how it plays, play test it, don't just look at data, and let's see where the game goes from there. Anyways, this video has been going way too long. I've just decided to talk about random things at this point, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully it wasn't too boring, and I guess you guys can see my perspective on a lot of these battlefield issues. Now, if you do not want these kind of videos, definitely hit me with a dislike. And if you do want more of these videos, you can hit me with a like. And of course, subscribe if you want to. I mean, we're getting close to 100,000 subs. That's the ultimate goal of mine. I would love to hit it. And with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely let me know what you think of these kind of videos, because they're very easy to make, especially at this point in Battlefield 2042, with so much to talk about. Uh, we can really, really go on for ages. Anyways, yep, yeah, all that said, take it easy, guys. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Peace.